The day the twins were born, um, I'd gone to bed the night before, no, no, not feeling any different. During the night, I can remember waking up with a pain and thinking, oh, I've got a pain, and, and just sort of falling, falling back to sleep. And probably about six, half past six in the morning, I just sat straight up in bed and I thought, oh my God, I'm in labour. And I'm thinking, I've still got more than three months to go. As Linda Treadwell races to Charleville Hospital, a series of events is about to unfold that will alter the course of healthcare in Queensland. She is met at the hospital by her doctor. I'm surprised. I didn't expect her to come into labour so quickly. Hmm. I delivered twins. The first one died not long after he was born. As I, as I had Brad, everything just went silent. And what had happened was this baby had appeared and it was the size of their hand. And what, what the hell were they going to do? We had an apneic blanket but, and we had humidity cribs but we didn't have all the necessary things to look after Premi baby, especially that was Premi. In recent weeks, Dorothy has attended a lecture by Dr. David Tudorhope, a neonatal specialist from Brisbane's Mater Hospital. This will prove crucial in saving young Brad's life. Dr. Tudorhope told us that it was important to set to keep, the, keep them warm, their temperature up, and keep them hydrated. and. Uh, so I had uh, cot lined with alfoil and um, cotton wool, and he looked like a roast beef. And I thought, and I must get him to Brisbane, to the martyr. I wasn't to hold out much hope for either of them surviving because they were so tiny. And we were a long way from anywhere. Having only been in Queensland for about two months, I'm not sure I even knew where Charleville was. So the first thing was to get a map and try and work out where Charleville actually was. We, we tried to get the Royal Flying Doctor Service, but that wasn't available. Even tried for the RAF to get a, a Hercules uh, RAF plane, but that wasn't available. And I thought, well, the time is running out. And the only pressurised plane I could think of was belonging to the government plane which belonged to Joe. So I thought, oh, well, here goes. And so I rang, rang him and told him who I was and I wanted to borrow his plane to fly this baby to Brisbane. A phone call came through that there could be a mercy flight required that night at Charleville. And we hadn't had done one at, at that stage. So when it came through, it was a little bit, oh, oh let's go, let's go. <laughs> At that point in time, no child had ever, a baby had ever been outborn in a, a regional hospital and transferred to Brisbane with a retrieval team. None of us was quite prepared for what we had to do or uh, what was expected of us. But we'd been uh, working in the unit that David ran and we presumed that once we got out there, we'd just do what we normally did with babies like that in the Mata. During the, the evening, I can remember being told that the plane had arrived and I saw him at a crib going past and doctors and nurses and just everybody sort of working on him. And I remember standing up and looking inside the humid crib and I don't think there was ever a time I stood there and thought, I'm never going to take him home.
the bread was put on board and with the with everybody and they took off. And then I thought, well he's right now. The nurse had um, Brad wrapped up in alfoil and she nursed him all the way to Brisbane. Brad's retrieval highlighted for us the fact that there, were, there could be problems in far distant parts of Queensland. And that began the retrieval service. Uh, we never thought it would grow to what it is at the uh, present time. And um, we are now the busiest obstetric hospital in Australia. We have a, a legacy uh, at the matter of um, reaching out to meet unmet needs. So we, we were very happy uh, to reach out and help where we could. We were all watching to see how Brad would get on. But uh, David Tudhope, you know, was one of the best in his field and uh, we had great faith in him. I think to myself, he was so tiny and his nose was so tiny. How could they get all those tubes down inside him and get them into the right spots? You know, you were, were you working on something so little? And since then, I guess they've done it so many times. But back in those days, I think Brad was the smallest for a long, long time. I was just uh, looking at some of the photos the other day and sitting here listening to it, I, yeah, I makes me wonder how I did it, how I survived. With, obviously with a lot of help. <laughs> and a big heart. <laughs>